Hey everyone, it's Justine and welcome to an organization video. Today I'm gonna go through five different methods or ways of storing my craft supplies that I have stuck to for years. Now I can't tell you how many times that I have moved, whether that be big moves overseas or moved houses or whatever. So I've had a lot of different craft room setups or craft area setups or craft corners or pieces of my bedroom, whichever one you wanna refer to it as. And these are the five things that I just keep coming back to that help me stay clean and organized, which also in turn increases my productivity. The cool part about this video is that I'm doing a collaboration with my good friend, Ardith. She's a very talented crafter and I've been in her craft room before and it is organized. She's gonna be sharing five of her ideas as well. So in total, you'll get 10 organization ideas. If you're new to my channel, welcome. My name is Justine and I'm primarily a card maker and stamper. I focus a lot in my channel on techniques and ways to make quick and easy cards that you can easily reproduce. So without any further delay, let's get started into the craft hack techniques. All right, the first thing I'm gonna talk about is organizing your stencils. Now I use an eight by eight binder that got a little damaged in my move, so I might need to replace it. But overall, this works really great for me personally. I've created these really great dividers using my foil quill and my Cricut machines, so I was able to customize my categories as I saw fit. Also pick a really pretty design. Then I have them all in page protectors, labeled with the manufacturer as well as the name of the stencil in case I ever have to search for inspiration. I then have them in the categories, as I said, and overall this is really great. Any stencils that are very similar, I tend to double up on the page protector because as you can see, I'm running out of space in my binder. Overall, I love to flip through it and see what I can use. Now the categories really help me stay organized and find my stencils easily. I came up with the following simple categories for my stencils that works well for me. Basics are pretty much all my scrapbook.com stencils, things like circles and stripes, uh, chevrons and things like that. I then have my florals, which also includes any sort of nature type leaves, trees, and things like that. I then have scenes, which includes things like hills and clouds and all of those things you need to make nature scenes or a lot of the My Favorite Things stencils are in there as well. I have templates for things like my Concord and Ninth Turnabout jig, my wreath builder stencil, and as well as all those new masking stencils that have come out that allow you to really create a quick circle or square with a stencil. My intricate stencils are all those ones like mandalas and doily type ones that are really have a lot of fine detail. I then have Christmas, which is pretty self-explanatory. Events are any holidays outside of Christmas. I don't tend to have a lot of them, so things like birthday stencils, graduation stencils, and things like that. And then anything that doesn't fit into those eight categories, I use the miscellaneous category. Now, number two is organizing my foils. Now, once again, I use a binder for this as well. So I have a normal eight and a half by 11 size three ring binder and page protectors. Now I have page protectors that are heavy duty and they also have a little lip at the top. So it's almost like a little flap that goes over the top to keep everything inside. I keep all my parchment and toner sheets at the front because those are probably the things I use need every time I foil. And then I've organized my foil into categories and I have them all in page protectors. You can see when I run out of a foil, I have it labeled so I'm able to see what I need to order again if I feel like ordering that color again. So I keep all my specialty sort of funner foils at the front and then it goes in color order. So yellow, orange, pink, red, and any sort of specialty ones like this one that has a sequin, I just keep it behind the solid color that originally was there. I keep all of my metallics sort of at the back, anything holographic, silver and gold, and any extra little pieces that I still need to file can slip into the back of the binder as well. I have a separate binder also for things like my foil mates as well as my clear sheets. And that works well for me. So I keep all of these in one drawer, including my mini mink machine, and I'm set to go to foil whenever I open that drawer. The next one is stamps and dies. Now I don't do anything innovative when it comes to stamps and dies, but I wanted to give a couple of quick tips. 
So first of all, I have them in these fridge bins. I have a mixture. I have this double bin here for anything that's four inch stamps. So four by eight, four by six. And the one above you saw was an eight inch fridge bin and that's for my six by eight stamps. Now what I can do is I can easily flip through. At the moment I don't have dividers, but they are in company order and eventually I will make my own custom dividers with my Cricut as well. I also keep certain companies in their own bins. For example, I own a lot of Concord and Ninth, Altenew and Scrapbook.com. So I keep those kind of in their own separate bins so I can grab them easily as well. So as you can see, I store my stamps with the backing sheet in there. That's mainly so if I resell or purge, you can see that they're original stamps. And I keep all coordinating dies on a magnetic sheet behind there so that they don't fall out or get lost. I find standalone dies, if they happen to fall out, aren't a big deal, but the coordinating dies are such a pain when that happens, so I find the magnetic sheet to be really easy. My question of the day for you today is a very simple one. Which area of your craft room needs the most help? Now I'm so excited to announce that I'm probably going to help you with this in the near future. I have been filming all sorts of types of organization strategy ideas and I can't wait to come out with a little video series about them in the future. So if you're interested in that, be sure to hit the subscribe button as well as the little bell there beside it so you'll be notified every time I post a video. The next tip that I wanted to give you is with organizing cardstock. Now I've organized my cardstock like this for ages and I have a little tips and techniques for doing it. I keep them in these metal Ikea magazine holders, very cheap and inexpensive. And I keep these in side folding pockets so you can see it's open at the top and the side. I use a whole circle punch there to punch the color so it can all be labeled. And I keep full sheets at the back and any sort of scraps there at the front. I also keep these labeled and that's mainly for when I end up with a pocket like this where I have no more full sheets of cardstock, then to me that's a signal that I need to reorder. Now I tend to order sampler packs if they're available and then I keep them all in their own pockets and if I happen to run out of that cardstock then I know it's a cardstock I use often and I can reorder it in a larger quantity. That way I don't end up with an insane amount of cardstock that I don't use. You can also see that by having that circle punch there, it's really easy for me to sort through and find the cardstock that I need. The magazine holders and all my stamps fit perfectly in my IKEA Calyx unit, and I really love the way that it looks behind me when I'm crafting. I just need to turn and grab. The next thing here that I'm going to talk about is organizing things like paints, drops, ink refills, anything in a half ounce or a one ounce bottle. So you can see here I have the color box organizers from scrapbook.com. They come with a lid if you want it. I tend to keep the lid off of the Nuvo ones and I use the lid to store things. And so I can easily grab these. It keeps them upside down so they're all ready to use. You can see that down here below in my craft room, I have a drawer filled with all my ink refills and anything where I didn't have the individual holders, you see that I have the lids from my Nuvo drops there to hold the rest of my reinkers. I love the way that it looks. It looks super organized and pretty when I open my drawer. These also fit perfectly in your Calyx unit as well. These fit so many different items in half ounce and one ounce sizes. All right, everyone, thank you for watching today's video. If you're interested in watching more about how I organize my craft room or how I purge my supplies, I recommend you check out my Marie Kondo inspired craft room cleanup. Thank you so much for watching and have an awesome week.